Okay, Mike, please, uh, please take it away. Oh, okay. Um, all right. So, um, hello, all. Uh, my name is Mike Strode. I am. Um, I reside in Southeast Chicago in the land of the Council of Three Fires, Oduwa, Ojibwe, Potawatomi, Anishinaabe, Kickapoo. Um, yes, yeah, so presently, you know, I've been here about 20 years, and um, I am founding coordinator of something called the Colonet Collaborative, which is Chicago's only um, citywide time bank, uh, time-based service labor and skills trading exchange, um, maintaining an open platform for community organizing, network weaving, and um, other forms of mutual aid. Uh, so I've, I've been involved in that particular work since 2017, and that work is what led me to a number of other things that I, I do, which are named in the bio, namely serving on the board of U.S. Solidarity Economy Network, New Economy Coalition, um, timebanks.org, and in my current work as program officer at Open Collective Foundation. Um, so, so that's a little, a bit of a nugget about me. And um, you know, there's a couple of things that I want to say about my offering of this presentation tonight, which is that um, there's a lot of things that I am and there's a lot of things that I am not. I am not, uh, you know, a member of the Southern Movement Assembly or even a representative of the Southern Movement Assembly. I have um, attended that body um, as a representative of the U.S. Solidarity Economy Network. I have uh, participated in other assembly organizing attempts in Chicago, um, and you know the the sort of short story long, um, or you know those those efforts did not pan out in the way that I envisioned them. But that's a good thing. Experimentation and failure teaches you a lot. Um, and also, I've participated in other assembly formations like the Resist and Build uh, formation, which was initiated by U.S. Solidarity Economy Network. Um, and has largely been, you know, was attempted to be, uh, you know, um, in person back in 2020 when the whole world flipped over um, and has largely been virtual for two years, but will go back in person in 2023 in, at Highlander. Um, and also in um, the building eco-socialism gathering that occurred in Vermont recently. So, so a lot of what the experiences that I will be offering and that I will be sharing um, are largely drawn from those um, encounters and my work as a facilitator. Um, I was part of the Headwaters Apprenticeship with Aorta, and um, the other part of this is, is material that I've drawn from Southern Movement Assemblies as a part of their training, so I definitely want to give all deference and credit to Project South um, and, and other members of the Southern Movement Assembly body and Stephanie Galud for some of the material that you're going to be seeing this evening that, that we'll be talking through. Um, so, you know, hopefully that will be valuable, meaningful, and useful to you. I would invite that if you want to throw questions in the chat um, as, as things are coming up or surfacing for you, I would, I would not mind that. Um, and, you know, I, I, as a virtual facilitator, I do have the ability to manage many processes or a couple of processes at once, not many. So I, I will get to those as best I can, so. All right. Um, okay, so you know this. Uh, you are 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 um, you have the advantage of seeing basically a first run at an attempted um, presentation that I have wanted to kind of design for a while. It's unpolished, unfinished. There are lots of elements in here that are you know uh, slide templates that you know I've just left as is. So you know um, you'll you'll pop, maybe you'll forgive me for the sort of unfinished state of things, but. Um, this is the People's Movement Assembly presentation. Again, you know, lots of material drawn from um, Southern Movement Assembly, but really talking about and grounding in the organized facilitate synthesized framework that is the basis for the assembly. For those who have gotten the PMA handbook, you've likely seen a lot of this material, but, you know, um, hopefully I will be able to provide maybe a facilitator overview that will maybe get you comfortable with the fact that just some of this is just good facilitation. And some of this is maybe more specific to the assembly. So um, a couple of the goals the, uh, or hopes of the presentation, and it's, um, you know, and maybe there's a sort of will do, won't do here. Learn, we'll learn a little bit about the history and practice of the People's Movement Assembly process. Um, we'll share some of the goals and plans for PMAs that have happened in communities across the South or elsewhere. Um, discuss some facilitation tips, synthesis and practice practices, we will get to maybe a little bit of that and then imagine um, our own approaches to organizing and facilitating the People's Movement Assembly. You all will probably take four offline or into another meeting that you all will do on your own. 
Um, but, you know, certainly we can maybe just kind of pepper a little bit of um, reflection into this space. Um, so the first off, what is a people's movement assembly? Just a gathering of people to make decisions for collective action and power, trying to answer three primary questions. What are the problems we face? What are the solutions? What are we going to do about it? Um, that is the essential nature of the assembly. Um, there are per perhaps, you know, more complex ways to think about what an assembly does, especially for folks who have been doing an assembly for a long time. The Southern Movement Assembly is a decade long effort. Um, so they have a, a more complex way to approach assemblies, but this is the center of it. And, you know, no matter what the size or the shape of your assembly, you know, if it's not hitting these three questions, it may not, you know, be hitting its goals. Um, and this just is a quote, you know, that's that, you know, you may have seen also in um, either the Bloody Lounge, uh, the, the text, or, you know, you might have seen it in the People's Movement Assembly Handbook, but Jack Minnis, Lowndes County Freedom Organization. So the people decided to form their own political organization. They would elect their own public officials. If they could take over the county government, they no longer have to ask for what they needed. They could take it. Um, this is um, also the essence of this of one of the earlier assemblies that are named in that text of the Lowndes County Freedom Organization um, and the Tent Cities. And it, it is certainly the, the seed of what we attempted to do in Chicago when I was a part of something called the Community Council's Working Group, where our goal, um, very similar to what I, I think I've heard you know, Yvonne give voice to, um, we wanted to figure out how we could knit assemblies into these, the aldermanic ward system that we have here so that we could decrease the amount of power, the, the essentially the aldermanic privilege that is allowed um, you know, in Chicago to, to aldermen of the wards. Um, that led us in the process of trying to um, politicize neighborhood associations, you know, that we were involved in, and also trying to provide um, polit political and popular education on the assembly process. Um, and so, you know, that that's that's some of the initial work that got me involved in assemblies, um, and then later on led me to, you know, more deeply study um, with, uh, you know, with Southern Movement Assembly and, and attend as a rep. So this, this just isn't a really important seed that, you know, is, is what the assembly process is grounded in. And, you know, one of the, the assemblies that is most important to name, and that if you, um, if you have not had an opportunity to attend, I mean, I would actually encourage that, you know, you should find a way to, you know, engage and attend with the Southern Movement Assembly. You certainly may, may not be a part of the decision-making body that comes out of that, but you uh, they are very open to people showing up, you know, in this in the virtual space, not necessarily the physical space, um, and 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 having a hand in the process and understanding what the assembly is. But this is one of the sort of the U.S. assemblies that has continued. You know, there was at one time the Southern Movement Assembly. There was, I think, you know, one of the Southwest Assemblies, or I forget exactly how they they named themselves regionally. Um, and then there was also. Um, other assemblies that you that happened in, in the Northeast. Um, but the Southern Movement Assembly is meant to bring community folks together for, um, from all of the social justice front lines, building a platform for movement governance um, grounded in shared principles, values, um, a space for collective decision making, a place to work out on the world that we're building towards, reflect on what that world is, um, develop some shared principles, and you know, honor the belief that no one is free until everyone is free. So that's the grounding uh, space of what the Southern Movement Assembly is. Um, and, and now I just kind of want to defer to the words of one of the, the folks who, have, who has guided the Southern Assembly process. So this is an excerpt from a report from Laura, Laura Flanders featuring Emory Wright and Fred Bama. Um, and so just, I want to give them the word on, you know, what they see as the, the nexus of the Southern Movement Assembly. The SMA really developed out of our experience seeing what wasn't available in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina and the Gulf Coast disaster. We saw that there was no mechanism for social movements to come together, make decisions, and then implement those decisions in, uh, at the scale that was necessary to respond to that level of disaster. And so we kind of made co commitments to ourselves as relatively young organizers back in 2005 that part of our generational struggle was to figure out this question of movement governance and how can social movements come together, 
make decisions and implement those decisions on a scale commensurate to the level of disaster and crisis that we're, we're facing. Part of the process that needs to be front and center within the Southern Movement Assembly is to connect with our brothers and sisters in the Global South because there's so much shared um, cultural foundations but also shared uh, struggles uh, and, and, and so we can use that to build not only grassroots power in the U.S. South but grassroots social movement power globally. What resonates for, for me is that, is that idea that uh, we can no longer wait until the state uh, came and do all, all, everything for us, you know. We, we must be able to build a civil society which is proactive which can found solution for our own problem in our own environment. In, in Lucha movement, we, we, we don't have any single leader. We have a core team, which is kind of um, playing a strategic role on the movement, but the, 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 the leadership is like a flat leadership. It's spread among many cells and many people. What Lucha is doing is um, by, by educating people, we are um, trying to end that feeling of powerlessness. We are working on founding our own solution. We are holding them accountable for what they are doing and what they are not doing. And we are make sure that they understand that if they don't do what they have to do, we will use our citizen power to make sure that they will face their responsibility and, and through election or through uh, mass demonstration that they will, uh, they, we will hold them accountable for their actions. Part of our struggle, certainly with Project South, has been uh, trying to connect to what we call the black radical traditions of the U.S. South. And we think now, because of what's happening globally, that history is very, very important to tap into today, both the, the idea of petitioning authorities for redress or, or, um, or change, but also, maybe even more importantly, creating what we need at the grassroots and providing that change for ourselves. So, you know, there's a couple of things that I just want to highlight that are really important um, contextual clues that are present in this report, right? Um, we are hearing, uh, you know, notes about the Black radical tradition. So there's an important cultural ethos that's grounded in the assembly process. Um, you know, I, I will speak to, um, and this is, this is not necessarily shade, this is learning, you know, that I, I will off, that I've offered directly to comrades about the Vermont gathering. Um, you know, there's a tendency when we're in political spaces to enter political spaces as political people and to only and to foreground our political theories, opinions, you know, um, engagement in that space. And it's really important to recognize that that we that 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 does not invite whole people into the space. And so if we can make sure that we're drawing upon and leaning upon traditions um, that we are from, you know, so certainly not appropriating any traditions that we are not of um, or that are not represented in our space, but drawing upon the traditions that we are connected to and then rooting our, our struggle and our work and our, our, our engagement in that, then we are creating a full space, a rich space, a robust space, so that when we are talking about issues, we're not talking about issues as just people, as just these political people that are in the room. We're talking about uh, this as folks who might be experimental musicians. We're talking about this as folks, you know, who might uh, play percussion on the weekends, as I do. We're talking about people who dance and dance to house music, you know, at, at uh, 2 a.m. at night, as I do, right? I want all of these types of uh, personalities to show up in the space because I want to, I want people to know that, that, that that's also what I'm connected to when I'm talking about the solidarity economy as a thing we need to invest our time and our resources and our, our, our efforts in. Um, so the, the, so looking at the sort of um, Southern Movement Assembly process or the, their, their PMA process, 
we um, got a sense that there are frontline struggles. And, you know, there we saw two frontline struggles, one, you know, connected to the U.S. South, one connected to um, the global South, you know, with Lucha. Um, but there are frontline struggles. The PMAs that happen across the South surface the issues and challenges that these frontline organization, organizations are facing um, through their direct work and their direct engagement with the with communities. So um, there are you all in this room, um, and maybe you represent organizations that you have come from, but maybe there are organizations out there that are working directly on other front lines that you are not connected to. Connecting to those organizations and, and incentivizing and encouraging them to run their own assemblies will surface issues and surface challenges that you can then bring to a larger, you know, citywide assembly if that's sort of what your goal is. But um, we see that that this frontline struggle, these local PMAs are filtered through the Southern Movement Assembly, you know, um, revolution on the radio. And then surfacing from that, you get those patterns and agreements out of the Southern Movement Assembly that become the basis for the, the strategic coordinated action that these organizations are going to take throughout the following year. And it's a process, you know, it's an annual process where people are coming back to this assembly, re retooling their strategy, going back out, and then pushing this, this, this these sort of these new strategies into their organizational work um, throughout the year. So it's it's a it's a really important sort of cyclical process that that's involved here in this assembly. Um, so what's the purpose of the the, the assembly, right? Um, this is a process that's meant to gather people who are fighting on the front lines for you know for for really key uh, reasons right we're generating some shared analysis um, whether that's about the social the economic political or cultural landscape and that's helping us to find opportunities where we're finally going to be able to surface coordinated action um, we are creating some shared visions of our communities region our world our future we are developing action plans that we can bring back to our home organizations. Um, and, and for me, like the phrase their home organization is really important um, because it, it, is, it is also another common aspect of some of these spaces that I've been in recently um, where, you know, the, the tendency of the lone revolutionary is, is a very popular one nowadays, right? Um, but, but, but no one gets free alone. Um, and so, you know, having home organizations where we can take this work back to is going to be a really important part of this um, because these action plans are not things that we will be able to carry out alone. We need to carry out them in concert with other people. And if we're having a sort of larger, and I know, I, I know the, the breadth of Chicago, and so, you know, just kind of applying the breadth of Chicago to where you all are, um, you know, we can have a citywide assembly, but I might not see those people for three months. Um, or longer, you know, um, if, if I, the way I travel and ride by bike. Um, but, you know, having action plans that you can take back to home organizations that, and you can weave these strategies into your home organizations, that's one, one, at, the one aspect of it. And then finally, we're practicing a, a movement government gov that um, is meant to dismantle oppression, build liberated infrastructure. So, you know, by movement governance, we are coming together. We won't always agree on sort of what the, what the line is, but we can find a way to synthesize what our agreements are and even what our what our, our disagreements are. And then we can find a way to, to collectively govern ourselves that allows us to, to take some of those shared, shared analyses, some of those shared actions back and, and do some common work you know, that, that we, we, we will do together. Um, and I can talk a little bit about the resist and build framework and how that, that ties into that um, a little bit later. Um, and then there's synthesis, right? As a decision-making process, you know. So um, this this is one other sort of aspect of of the assembly that often, you know, is it feels confusing. You know, I I know the one of the the primary questions that that was asked of me by Ivan, you know, in, in our sort of small meet was just what's the decision-making process. Um, now, in both the sort of handbook and in, and in also in the in the the sort of um, training that that Project South does, they talk about synthesis as a decision making process. Um, and you know there are two parts of this, right? There's the rigorous attention to all of the information that's generated at the assembly, and then there's this sort of you know new knowledge, which is our collective knowledge that's produced at the assembly. That is the community mandate. That's the shared action plans. That's the vision of everyone assembled. And so what is what the synthesis look like as a decision making process um, at each of these assemblies, there's a team of synthesizers right there's there's a team of facilitators there's a team of folks synthesizing 
And the goal of, of those two teams is that you are supposed to be doing deep listening throughout. So here's this, a, a small nugget. Some of you will not be able to participate fully in the assembly because you need to step back and be attending to the process of the, the assembly. Who is, who is willing to hold the process, right? And um, by holding that process, that team of, of synthesizers is able to do that deep listening, both in the large sessions and then in the breakout sessions, so that when it comes to the, 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 the part where, you know, um, everybody else, you know, goes off and maybe they're doing, you know, they're doing a meal time or they're doing a skill share, they're doing some other workshop, those synthesizers are together thinking, of, thinking intentionally about what is it that was heard throughout this assembly that we see as sort of common points of action, common points of intention that we can gather together and present to the assembly as here is what we've heard. Is this what we all agree to? Um, so th that that's sort of what synthesis as a decision making process looks like. It doesn't mean that you all will be sitting in a very large circle and coming to consensus. It does mean that you will be inviting as facilitators everyone's voices into the room and you will be trying to facilitate, um, you know, uh, intersections between all of the things that you're hearing. And, and so what does it look like when you actually get to the end of a synthesis process, right? Um, as I mentioned, um, Southern Movement Assembly is a, is a decade long effort at this point, right? You know, since 2012 um, and, and, and going, going even back further, right? You know, before um, to Hurricane Katrina. Um, this is a, a, a group that has been, or a body rather, you know, that has been committed to connecting, to organizing, to building assemblies over the entire arc of time. And they have honed that into a, a series of three strategies that they see as the key strategies that they wanna work on to, for, for their region, which is in crisis and, and to strategize through that crisis. And that's building sanctuary spaces. So creating spaces where they can gather resources, share skills, educate, prepare for crisis and healing. Um, and, and, you know, and, and a lot of that, 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 um, that wariness about the sanctuary space comes from the experience of Hurricane Katrina and folks who still have lived trauma that, that is drawn from that. Um, they're talking about gathering our people and you know, what does that look like? Bringing resources together. Yeah, sure. no? No. Get, no? Gathering more people into organizing spaces like assemblies, skill shares, workshops, regional strategies, and then tearing down walls. How can we interrupt state violence and the policies that harm, divide, and fracture our communities? And then they've, 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 they've devolved that into further strategies. When they're building sanctuary spaces, they want to practice local governance, community controls. They want to build new economies or solidarity economies. They want mutual aid liberation centers. And this, this particular strategy is present before 2020, right? So they they were they were strategizing around mutual aid liberation centers before the pandemic pushed everybody over the over the bridge into mutual aid. And then finally tearing down walls, right? They're connecting to abolition movements, boycotting and divesting from entities that that harm. So this is a, a strategy that connects across movements, that connects across front lines. And it didn't come from a sort of top down where you know some folks came and they said, these are the strategies for the next 10 years. These were the issues that frontline communities were facing and frontline communities said, we need a solution for this. And so they developed a strategy that, it, that encompassed the issues that, they, that those communities were dealing with. Um, and then, you know, and, and if we sort of go to the, this is the sort of backside, this is a very large poster, you know, that's two-sided. If we flip over there, we see that the assembly is a, is a relatively sort of small nugget in all of this strategy, right? The assembly is a, is a place where you can gather, assess conditions, make plans to, to advance shared strategies. And that assembly is what gets you to that people's democracy that tells you how you are going to build new economies, how you're going to protect and defend communities. Um, and so, so this, this is just an example of what it looks like when you take, take time and you hone your strategy over time um, as a part of this assembly process. So just looking at the sort of before, during, and after of an assembly, right? Um, the assembly is, is, an, is an organizing strategy, right? It's an ongoing process to practice and exercise power at community level, um, across front lines of social movements. Um, the before, during, and after cycle reflects the organizing process. Um, and so before, there's preparation. Uh, during, there's facilitation and participation. Um, after, there, well, in fact, there's reflection during, during, during as well. And then after, there's follow-up, right? 
these are all the critical stages of the assembly that you have to be attendant to um, as you advance from one stage to the next. And then each one of these assemblies is meant to build on the previous lessons and accumulate knowledge. So it's important that you don't think of the assembly process as just this one-off event. Um, it should be an event that should connect you to the next event. And you should always be able to look back and measure you know, how far you've come from the last event and what you still need to work on. Um, so, so the assembly process should tell you something as you go through it. Um, and so this is a further sort of you know, uh, deepening of the before, during, and after process. So before preparation, um, convene that planning team, structure your invitation to, to those frontline participants, prepare an agenda and a facilitation plan, um, organizing, set expectations for participants, and orient them. This, the orientation is actually one of the most important parts for me, um, and it's, it's what I spend a lot of time in organizations doing. I want everyone to feel like they know what's going on and they know where they are. Um, so, so make sure you, you design, have someone designing an orientation process with you. Um, create an environment of radical hospitality in the space um, where the assembly is hosted. Relationship build, welcome participants, cultivate informal bumping spaces where folks can meet one another, support healing, feed people, <laughs> um, learning and strategizing. Set that context for the PMA. Um, you might have grounding exercises. You might have someone who can speak or clearly articulate the goals. You would provide historical background and analysis. You would discuss visions for the future, um, which is you know, a really key part of what we do during resist and build. You know, um, we had this sort of context setting space, and then we go into small groups and we would, we would talk about what we heard during the context setting. And then we would come out of those small groups and you know, we would just um, we, we would we would do a little bit of a, of an unraveling of what what was discussed in the small groups. And then we go into a different set of small groups, which are basically our working groups, you know, um, so I'm in the narrative circle and, you know, I'm able to go and talk about what we're going to do on narrative strategy over the next th uh, three months until the next um, resistant build. So this is sort of learning and strategizing that's happening during the uh, um, assembly and then action. Right? Whoop, that action was not updated. And neither was evaluation. See, this is where you see me learning in real time. I, I neglected to update, update these. Action and evaluation. Um, essentially, once, once you come to the end of learning and strategizing, you need to have a set of action steps of what's going to come next. And you need to have a process for evaluating um, how, how you've moved, how, how you've gotten from the last assembly, um, what, you know, um, what learnings you've, done, you've, you've get, gained from the action that happened. Um, so this, this is sort of the, 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 the three-stage process before, during, and then after. Now, who is at the assembly? You know, um, the assembly is, is about group-centered leadership. So we have this constellation of social movement organizations and people that seek to govern themselves. Um, you know, uh, David Cobb, you know, who, who I, I work with on the, the board of the US Solidarity Economy Network, um, calls it the phenomena of, you know, there are some meetings that are just y'all come and there are some meetings that are like, we want you here, right? You know, so you need to determine sort of which one this is. Um, and assembly is not necessarily just a free for all. You need to be intentional about what you're, what type of assembly you're, you're building and who the, who the assembly is for, what issues are you engaging? Because the participants should be grounded in lived experience and represent communities impacted by these injustices. Um, there should be trust and leadership invested in the people who are assembled to be capable of holding the space and making decisions together. And then it should be decolonial de and decentralized. There is not a, not a central leader here, not a central organization. There's not a predetermined goal because they, the assembly is going to surface what's most important to focus on. Um, one of my you know, teachers here, Cheryl Graves, who does uh, circle keeping in Chicago, said the circle can hold the, hold the process or hold the weight, right? Um, can you trust that the circle is going to be able to hold what you have to bring to it? Um, and if you can't trust that, you, you might not be building an assembly that will be representative of the people that are, that are there. Um, now, how? Um, you know, and I'm, 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 I'm breezing through a bit, you know, but um, so how do we facilitate it or how do we build this assembly, you know, um, and just a sort of little reference to Montel Jordan, this is how we do it. Um, facilitation, we want strong facilitation present throughout the assembly, we want participants to feel held within the space. 
So you, you don't necessarily need to hire a facilitator, but you at least need to commit collectively to, to finding the right facilitation for the space that you all wanna create. Um, culture needs to be woven throughout the gathering, right? It's not tacked on as an afterthought. Um, how can you make sure that culture is showing up all throughout the space? And again, the cultures that we come from, the cultures that we represent, um, synthesis. It assembles the wisdom of all of the voices present in the, in the assembly into a powerful community mandate for action. We want skills present, right? We wanna have skill building spaces that are a core part of the work that we do to build relationships and make this time feel valuable. Why did people show up? Well, they showed up because we do have to make decisions together, but what do I get out of this? Well, you can learn something, you can build a new skill, you can build a new relationship. Commitments, we want the assembly to be a space for us to recommit to one another, to our collective vision, and to a plan for a very different world than the one we're in now. And then next steps, everyone should leave with one or more stepping stones or concrete actions they can take to their home organization because they need to take that step so that when they come back to the assembly, they have learnings to share with you. Um, and then this is a sort of further grounding in, in the, the importance of culture from Maya Hunter of Spirit House. Culture is not usually seen as a strategy to win, but our opposition knows that if you strip the culture, you can control the people. How do we snuff out the oppressive culture? Our culture, the culture of the multitudes, the dominant voice. Um, so again, culture is not an afterthought in the assembly. And in order to make sure that you can center culture you, or, you, or, or you, you can have culture woven throughout, you need to center it, right? So culture is not the performer, you know, that you brought in at the end of the assembly. This is not necessarily live aid or anything like that. Um, we want culture to be present throughout, you know, what are the place-based elements that we can, we can ground in that would represent the place, the peoples, the desires of the group that we have, have um, brought together? Um, what are the acknowledgments that we need to bring into the room that will recognize the history of the places that we are in um, or the places that we are from? Um, we are on stolen land and rich by stolen people. Um, we are, it, it's, there's some grounding or that, that's, that's important here. So we want like chants or synchronized breaths with meditation, things that creates cohesion and synergy amongst the large groups. Um, songs in the languages of the, uh, and lineages of the people who are gathered at the assembly. And, you know, my favorite uh, movement, you know, um, break for dance whenever it feels right, encourage spontaneous expressions of joy throughout the, out the space and celebrate children who bring them into the space at the most inopportune times. Um, this, is, this is what an assembly is for. Um, it, it, is, it is for people to, to recognize that, again, we are more than just our, our politics. There, there are whole people here and we want whole people to show up in the room because that creates a deeper experience than just the sort of political conversation that, that we sometimes are, are left with. Um, and then skill shares and workshop space, um, assembled learning. So based on whatever timing you have in the assembly, sometimes it's possible to do skill shares and workshops, sometimes it's not. The longer you are together and the more you need to break up the time of the assembly, sometimes you might wanna have some skill shares or workshops happening. What workshops can you have happening? It's really whatever you want, but maybe you can think about documentation. Um, archiving is a critical part of movement work that is very underrepresented at the grassroots. We should be building collective skills here about how to note take, how to document, and how to archive our work. Um, the art of hosting. Uh, you know, as, as someone who facilitates, I know how people really, really underappreciate good facilitation. Um, but you know, we can we can make sure that we are handing these skills off to people at these gatherings, right? Site logistics, event planning, agenda design, facilitation. We want people to run these assemblies when they return home, and we want to give the skills in the space that they can use to do that. And then, you know, um, and when I was in high school, our, our, our civics textbook was called Street Civics. So yeah, Street Civics and Legal Aid, Know Your Rights Training, Tenant Organizing, Participatory Action Research, whatever are the skills, again, that, that might be gaps that are surfaced at the assembly, we want people to be training on site to fill those gaps so that when people leave, they leave with these skills that they can immediately use when they get back to um, their home organizations. Um, now let's uh, just uh, sort of ground in facilitating towards synthesis. So um, in terms of, terms of getting to synthesis, you wanna organize a small group that is gonna be responsible for listening and discussing throughout the assembly. 
that group should be listening again for weight, volume, frequency. So you, it's not that you need people to take every single note, but you need people to be deeply listening to what is most important, you know, not the loudest talker, but what issues keep surfacing, what things keep coming up, what's frequent. Um, so they're, they're listening for that. And that, that's why it's really important that those folks have an opportunity to step back from the assembly and be in, in the specific space of synthesizing or facilitating. Um, discuss overlapping themes, connections, uh, questions, disagreements, synthesize these themes and agreements and poten into potential action steps, um, prepare to present all of this before the full assembly, and then create a physical and accessible method for expressing agreement and commitment. So, you know, this is how we're getting towards synthesis. Um, there, there are different spaces that are happening throughout an assembly. And when you get to the end, ideally that synthesis team has a, something to present before the full assembly and everyone has a way that they can express agreement or commitment to the, the things that, um, that have surfaced there. I'm actually going to stop here at, because um, this leans into another part of the presentation that's mostly unfinished. But I, I want to see if there are questions that are surfacing um, as, as a part of this, and then I maybe have some other you know, tips I can offer about around facilitation as well. well I just want to say that that was definitely uh, really, really dope, right? Like, I think just to have the experience of, of what y'all been doing, what they've been doing in the Southern Movement Assemblies, to hear that, I think that's something that's inspiring to me. Um, so I appreciate that. I appreciate all the information you shared. I, yeah, I did, I did want to, I, I see some, I'm trying to see if there's folks putting things into the chat. People are just definitely thanking you. I do have a question, but I didn't want it since I'm a facilitator, I don't want to be the first one to jump in. So I'm, I'm seeing who else is here who'd like to say something. Uh, Yvonne? Yeah, thank you, Mike. This was an incredible, incredible presentation. So helpful. Thank you so much. And both like really encouraging and also extremely overwhelming. <laughs> not not because of your your you know presentation, but it's also like there's so much that goes in, so much sort of intention, so much planning, you know, that and preparation that goes into the assembly. I just have a really like concrete question. Like we are planning an assembly in less than a month. Like like how much time do you need to, to, to put all these different elements together? Um, and are we just jumping in to it too quickly? We're, we're sort of doing it in a way because we're responding to what's happening here in Los Angeles. We have this you know leak, leaked recording that happened um, that exposed city council members. But we like, and so I think early on when we started talking, we recognized that like, this is a long-term goal but are we like, yeah, I don't know, like it should, are we rushing into this? I'm, I'm a little nervous about that. Yeah, um, so let's, uh, let's treat this like clinic time. This, this is, that's a great, you know, that's a great approach, right? That gets us right into stage four of imagining. Um, how long is the assembly? And, and this, this might actually, this might require some engagement and conversation, so. I don't even think we've, that's not even something we've even come up with yet. I, I, I mean, we're just getting to the point to even talk about agenda and sort of like facilitation and all those kind of things. And there's really nothing down yet. You know, we have a date. We don't have a time of the day. I, I, you know, seeing what y'all are doing, you know, looking to see what they did at uh, Operation Cooperation Jackson and like those kind of things. These seem like they're, they're all day events, right? It's not like an hour, two hour meeting. It's, it's an all day event because you want to try to get through a lot of different things. How, how long do you, you do the assemblies you, you run usually run for? Yeah, so it, it it's some of this is going, uh, there's a lot dependent here, right? If this is a first assembly, the first assembly is there's a getting to know you, right? So you, you have to build in space for the fact that maybe you are bringing together organizations who have not casually worked together, or maybe they have worked together. You, you might find that there are some conflicts that, you know, just suddenly show up that you didn't know about because they were in the back pocket, you know, and I didn't know they were going to be in the room. So you are you are building a space that needs to be able to hold all of those potentialities. It's not just that you have the goal that you're going to walk into the room with and you're going to be able to accomplish that goal 
um, in, in a three hour stretch. Um, now the, the, the resist and build gathering, so we do, we do those quarterly. So the first one happened in the spring of 2020, and we've been doing a resist and build gathering quarterly um, you know, since that time. And those are virtual events that are two hours. And it's meant to be sort of a national convening of folks that are working on solidarity economy strategies where we can you know, just take an assessment of the political moment and then determine what is the sort of response or what is the movement forward for folks who are working in the solidarity economy. So we, we, we managed to do that in two hours mostly because we have honed the process over time and we recognize that virtually there's only so much time you can commit to, to, being, to sitting virtually. And if we do these quarterly, we don't necessarily need people on, on, the, on the phone for three, on the video for three hours. We, we can do what we need to do in two hours and work between the quarters. So that, that's, that we do that in, in the time that we do it because we know we're going to continue working together between those, those meetings. If you're going to have a sort of maybe one-off meeting, then it's that, that's more challenging because what you're able to accomplish in that single meeting, if you don't have a definite plan for when you're going to meet afterwards, so that, that's maybe the other thing, right? Um, you're, you're planning for the assembly, but you're also trying to intentionally you know, think through what's the next meeting that is going to happen from the this you know and or, or is it just about that you are going to go back to your 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 um your spaces your home organizations and you're going to do some things and then we'll we'll have a reconvening x number of you know time you know space down so you you can certainly do it it's just recognizing what you will be able to do in the space of time that you have to do it that you have to plan um yeah, you absolutely can build a good, a, 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 an enriched facilitation in a month. Um, you just want to make sure that you're looking at some of these other aspects of what's going to happen afterwards. We have his hand up. Yeah, so sort of jumping off of that in terms of, of you know, our plans, um, you know, before you joined, I don't know if you if you heard much of the previous discussion right before you started, we were discussing um, a list of, of like working groups that we're going to put together some demands that we wanted to, uh, you know, flesh out and sort of make the product of the assembly. But I'm wondering now if, you know, what you said about not coming to the assembly with a goal, um, if instead of that being a list of demands, it should be like a list of, of issues where we need to go out and find groups to invite to the assembly who are working on that particular issue so that they can they can like surface those demands as part of the assembly instead of us coming in with a list of things saying like these are the things that we want to start making demands about yeah yeah i mean you 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 definitely will need those folks that are you you definitely will need those folks that are working on those issues and even more if you can find the folks that they, because because sometimes there are folks who are working on those issues and there are folks who are affected by those issues, you need to figure out the sort of bal the right balance of you know making sure that the folks who are fully impacted by an issue are in the room to speak for themselves about how that issue impacts them because that's what's going to surface the the deepest you know level of strategy that you might need to um, to 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 come out of the assembly. But yes, you, you, you would definitely want to think about how you can get those, those things and those voices in the room um, and, and maybe not so much, you know, say, here's the list of demands that we are prepared to present um, because that might shorten the conversation in, in a not as helpful way. Okay, no, I, that, that's really, really useful reframing of, of the, the work that we already started. Thank you for that. And I, there's a question from Roberto about, you know, world space, uh, you know, um, un mundo donde, uh, you know, <laughs> um, I, I don't have a, a cape on totals. No, well, that's, that wasn't the rest of it. Got it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, what do we agree on already? So that, that is, there, there's, there's certainly space for that, you know, and, and as you are beginning your synthesis from, what are the issues that we all agree on towards, you know, what are some of the strategies that we are hearing or surface? I'm wondering if, um, you know, you'd recommend that 
the next time that we're meeting, I know it's an in-person and some will need some remote access and that you mentioned that the first meeting is really important, that it's an opportunity to relationship build. Um, and so I'm wondering how, how much time is needed? There's a lot of things, a lot of noise, a lot of um, people who are very activated, who are, you know, showing up to actions, to city council, to um, protest, to literally camping out in front of our um, city council member in this district who refuses to resign. So I'm wondering, um, what's the outreach and engagement time that's typically recommended before uh, a people's assembly, you know, starts? It's kind of chicken or the egg, right? Because, you know, getting meeting gathers the ability for people to come to the space and know about it, but then also outreach about the meeting and making sure that people, you know, know that there's enough time uh, to join. So do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, difficult to say. What I would say is that um, open space and the art of hosting, um, the invitation is everything. And so part of this is you all, there, there is the, there is still space, even though we've kind of said that like, hey, maybe you don't come with the sort of list of demands, you like kind of try to surface the issues and get the get the folks there. There is still space for you to actually craft some parts of the agenda and use that to frame your invitation. This is what you are being invited to. And um, that invitation is, is the thing that, that, that moves people to, to arrive there, to build those relationships, to share those skills, to surface those issues, to figure out strategies together. So the invitation is everything. Um, you know, when we do the resist and build quarterlies, we try to get, you know, our invitation out, you know, a month in advance. Um, when they, the building eco-socialism gathering in Vermont, you know, happened, that invitation was probably six, you know, or eight months out because they actually wanted people to travel to Vermont for that. So, you know, um, depending upon how, how, how easy or challenging it might be for people to move from where they are to where this assembly is. Um, you just want to make sure that you're making considerations that they can adjust their schedule, get it on their calendar, um, you know, prioritize or, or have people having direct conversations with them that say, I recognize that this is a really challenging time for you, but we really want you there, you know, so some of that one on one. So you would just need to build enough time for all of that stuff to happen. And that may be a month or it may be two months, depending upon the context. All right, are there other questions? I mean, I think for, for me, we're hoping that we can come back to you and, and as we're building this out, as we're kind of getting things clarified and you know laying out the agenda and everything, coming back to you to ask you, does this sound okay? Because like, like you said, I do think that the initial one, we're hoping to just have a space where people who've been meeting here regularly, but then also all the other organizations that you know we're affiliated with, get those folks in the room, just invite as many people you know, from a broad you know, constituency into the space to really begin to lay the foundation for what an assembly would look like. Because we, we want it to be something that's ongoing. We don't want it to be like one time and then we're done even though there's demands that are sort of gonna be uh, put out there, we still want it to be a space that's gonna to continue to grow, right? And almost, I mean, what I've talked, what I've said before and what I think other folks here have said before, we would like that to be the thing that kind of, you know, down the road replaces the sort of traditional city council model, right? Like that stuff that is not really people friendly, that is not about getting the community involved, that's about, you know, making decisions that really go behind our backs. So we wanna create an alternative to that, right? So like, it is gonna be a long-term process, but this first one is just like, let's get together and like show that we can at least sit down and talk these things through. And maybe from that point, start to identify, here are the major things that we want to address. But yeah, I, I, think, I think it's just, to, to, to us it's like, we just got to do it, right? Just get it going. I, I do think there's a lot of work that's going to be involved to try to get it together. But yeah, I think that, that what y'all have been doing down there is something that, that I've studied a lot. And I think that it's possible. It, it doesn't need to be this massive, you know, six year plan, thing that's, that's put out there that takes forever to, to organize. We can, you know, I think we have a lot of skills, we can get it together, um, but we will have to come back to you to 
make sure that you know we're going down the right path though because we don't want to totally miss the boat here either um yeah i, I don't know if there's anything else i i would definitely want to make sure we have folks who can ask any other questions we, we appreciate your time i know you're, you're in chicago so it's a little later there than it is here so we don't want to keep you too late stuff appreciate it cindy um, no, I realize that we're over time and we yeah. know that um, your time is precious. This is all of ours. So thank you so much um, for joining us. And I'm just going to paste in the chat where um, we can find you. Um, and if this presentation is, um, you know, finished, we'd love to be able to share it. Um, thank you so much. And if there's nothing else, I think we just have to agree if we want to meet again next week um, at 7 p.m. Um, and... Um, I know we have a lot to think about and, and talk about. So thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I will send send um, send Ivan the pre one of the versions of the presentation that you know Project Soft did, and then whenever I sort of get the polish on, on my own, I'll send that one along as well. Thank All right. You. All right. Thank we look you, Mike. To that. Yeah, and we'll also look forward. We're, we're hopefully get this.